Alright, hello again everyone. This is just a quick tips thingy to show you how to render a high poly to a low poly uh, mesh. So as you can see here I have my high poly, I'm just going to rename this because this will be available for download. I'll throw it up on my website or something you can download from there. Um, so this is, as you see, a high poly version of it. And I want to render this down to the texture on here on this plane as you can see right here. So first what we're going to do is I can see the isolation mode. First what we're going to do is set up the low poly or the plane in this case to be I'm just gonna leave that out because I was testing it out. What we're gonna do is set up this low poly to be in about the right place for the high poly. Um, if you're making an actual low poly model, usually what you do is you try to conform it to the high poly as much as possible without throwing in the details. So as you see, the plane is very much conformed, but there's not these little rivets I designed with these uh, interlocking stones. This large one that's popping out isn't there. These smaller drop down ones aren't in there as well. But we have about the average size of it. Um, because we won't see underneath this block, we don't need to worry about anything that's down here for the offsetting. So any of this uh, I guess geometry that's down here, what we can do is you can select it and pull it up to about there just to make sure that the bake is better. So now that we have our low poly set up in a nice position compared to our high poly, what we can do is we are going to render to a texture using the render to texture dialog box. So to get this open, you press 0 or it's under render, render to texture right there. So first what we want to do is we want to select our low poly. Make sure that this is low poly with the UVs unwrapped. If you want to know how to unwrap UVs, I have a tutorial on it. A lot of people have tutorials on it. I'm just going to switch this to the name to low poly. Um, so also what we need to make sure is under materials editor, I just have two standard materials. These are just from my bake before. I have just two very standard materials. If you want to do ambient occlusion mapping, which I think I'm going to show you guys, um, what we'll want to do is under rendering setup, so under rendering, render setup, under assign renderer, we want to switch this to mental ray renderer. Now what this allows us to do is do an ambient occlusion pass as well. We'll close that out, and now what we'll do is leave these two materials as about the same. So. I'm going to close up the select material editor, and that's fine. And now what we want to do, when you first get into this window, it will look something like this. I'll just delete this out of here. It'll look something like this. So you'll have your low poly in here, you'll have your path. So first what we want to do is select our path. I've already set it up to where I want it to be rendered out to, but this is the texture that it will render out, that it bakes out. So your normal texture, your diffuse textures, if you have any, your ambient occlusion texture, etc. I usually only bake out ambient occlusions from 3ds Max. I have never really found the necessity to make a normal map from a high poly map inside Max. I usually use X Normal or ZBrush or actually not ZBrush, uh, Mudbox. Because I'm a Max, I'm an Autodesk fanboy. So we'll cancel this out because I already know it's in the right area for me. If you're having, if you download this file, you have to switch this up a bit too. So next, what we'll have to do is under this projection mapping, we want to enable it. So first we enable it, keep these same uh, same set of settings, sorry, keep these settings the same, and under pick, what we want to do is pick our high poly rig. So what we need is we need our low poly selected, but we want to projection map our high poly onto that low poly. After that, we'll go under projection options. These things are pretty small. We won't change anything as these round, I'm just going to go over them. So first we have our objects, which is low poly. There's no outputs to it yet because as you can see under outputs right here, there's nothing outputting yet. If we added something to it, there would be start outputting. We can crop the alpha, don't really need to do that. Um, cage is the best if we don't use cage. If we sorry, if we used a ray traced uh, material, we could use something different, or UV material, we could use something different, but cage works just well. So what cage does is it cages around this high poly one, finds the best uh, cage with this. Uh, that conforms the entire high poly rig and then cages that with the low poly rig. As you can see, there's also been a projection map um, modifier that has been added to our stack here. That was done automatically when we selected to enable the projection mapping. 
And now these are just, uh, this makes it tangent to the normal, so it is 90 degrees from the normal, if you know what tangents are, done in math a lot. Uh, usually it's the best one to use because it allows the normals to be the same direction, I guess. So it'll take the projection in accordance to the normal of this plane, our low poly plane. As well as we have the height map, so we can have a minimum height of negative 3 and positive, or negative 4 and positive 4. Really, those don't need to be changed unless you have some huge thing. But what you want to make sure is that your low poly is within four inches of your high poly. If you don't do that, then all the data that your bump map will be generating is going to be completely lost. So we'll close that out. And under these mapping coordinates, we'll use our original channel. So since we already unwrapped it under this unwrap UVW map, I'm not going to click it because, yeah, it would it would uh, depend on the topology. But this was set to 1, so we want to select the exact same as our unwrap UVW that we did before. As a plane, it was a very simple unwrap. And then under output, we want to add a normal output. So click the normals map output. And here is the file name that will be saved out to you. You can save this in a different place if you want, but I like where it's saved under my normal map one. Next, what we're going to do is change the size of the thing. We want more detail, so I'm going to bump that up to 2K. And what we also want to do is output into a normal map bump. This makes sure that it outputs it into a material that's meant to transform a normal map into a bump map. As well, we want to add another one of these, and we want to add a ambient occlusion map. Now for this one, we're going to bump it up to 24 day again. 256 samples is usually good. The spread and the max distance shouldn't be needed too, too much. Um, other than that, our target map slot, we'll just throw this in diffuse color so you can see the ambient occlusion properly. But as you see, our normals map is going into our bump color, and this is going into our diffuse color. Now what we want to do is output into source. This might be checked for you guys, but what we want to do is output into source. This means it bakes it off and then outputs it back into the material that your low poly already has. A lot of times I didn't even use this. I just I didn't even have a target map slot. I just saved them and if I was doing a game or something. I would just save them because you will never use them again inside the 3D editor. What you're going to do is you're going to import those these maps that you make here. You're going to import those into your game engine, uh, CryEngine, UDK, Unity, Torque. Jesus, there's a lot of game engines. Any Creation Kit, I think. Uh, I don't know if Creation Tiff needs the NIP tools thing for exporting maps, but that's not really anything. Anyways, so exactly. So what you want to see is we're going to have your low poly here. You're going to have your projection mapping in here, enabled under projection. You're going to have already picked your your high poly object. Just like that again. And now it gives me two high poly objects. I don't want one of them, so I'm just going to delete this one. You only want to see the high poly object level right there. You're going to use your existing channels that you already used for your unwrap UVW modifier. You're going to have your normals map, your aim and occlusion map. And then what you're going to hit is render and I'm going to overwrite the file since I have it. So first you can see this is the normal map. What it's kind of doing is putting the details of the higher poly onto a bump map that will be read. As you notice a lot of uh, normal maps don't really have the exact same color differentiation so this looks a bit weird. However once it's finished I'm going to show you the target file that I saved out and also you can save as many different things, targets, JPEGs, pings, usually save something with transparency or an alpha channel, so pings or targas. I like targas just personally because there seems to be a really old school uh, game style of, I don't know, game style of image, I guess. And while their size is large, it, it takes the necessary detail that you will need in the game engine. Um, JPEGs are great for web, those of you know that pings, the better, the newer and the better targa but I don't know, I'm an old school guy. So we're just going to wait for this to finish and then it's going to go through the ambient occlusion one. I think you can see, no, you can't see it there. Yeah, you can only see those two. No, wait, that's not the same one. No, you can't see it there. So I'm going to pause this while this renders out quickly. So now it has gone through both of them it seems and what we're going to do is navigate to this area that I saved them off as and what you'll see is the ambient occlusion right here and the normal map right there. As you can see, those are the names I saved them at, low poly normal map and low poly ambient occlusion. So what we're going to do is preview these both to show you what I mean by 
even though it looked like a very simple uh, red on kind of diffuse color map, it actually still holds the same information that we need. So this is the ambient occlusion. This shows us the black will just show shadows. What we'll do is we'll put this on the diffuse map just so we can see where the shadows would be. Usually you would just multiply this onto your diffuse map instead of just completely outright because these are just shadows generated by the object onto itself. What ambient occlusion is, in basic terms, is it sends out rays. When it hits something, it calls back and says, there is something here. This is how detailed I want my shadow. Very layman's terms there. Don't quote me on it fully, but if you want to read more about ambient occlusion, there's a lot of stuff on the internet about it. Yeah, a little poly. And this is the normal map. As you can see now, it is the normal map we're quite used to seeing with the purples and greens. You can also see where it is lower, where this lighter blue is, and where it's higher up, where these darker purples are. So what we're going to do is, yeah, don't place these because this was just for previewing. What we're going to do is see how it's set up in our material editor. So close this out, close this out, and hide this selection. And someone just beat me on Facebook, but I'm not going to answer. I don't even know if you can hear that. Um, anyways, so what we will do is go to our material editor by pressing M. And excuse me one second. Sorry about that. All right, so as you can see in our material editor, material 3, which is our one right here, which is on our plane, has the diffuse color to be this ambient occlusion that we set it up to be, and this bump to be the normal bump map style in the bump map that we already set it out. Um, this we set up in the render to texture thing. We don't need that right now because that's just for other material. And if I show it in viewport, you can see the bump map being kind of applied and the diffuse map. What I'm going to do though is delete the diffuse map. So it looks very gray right here, but if we render it out or if we put it in any game engine, you can see the detail that just a bump map will give us. This is literally one polygon. However, with the rendered high poly frame onto it, you can see that it looks like there are multitudes of, I was pointing at the screen, you wouldn't have seen that. There are multitudes of uh, heights to this. You can see that it kind of looks like it's deeper down in here. You can always add more detail to this uh, to using POM displacement, which most game engines use nowadays. These displacement maps in the regular, uh, in the standard bump maps, really don't do it justice. You can bump this up though, and you can get some really wonky results. Like it will tear. But you can still see that it looks like there is some depth to it. Um, but there you go. That's how you would make, and from this angle, you can see there was a, if I unhide all, this box right here, one, two, three. Yeah, it's, but it's supposed to be this one. That's supposed to be much higher. However, it doesn't appear that way. Be probably and most certainly because of the negative and positive amounts that I was allowed to go over and under, it just didn't select it. However, you can see how you can get some detail and some, uh, I guess, depth to something when you just render a quick nor or bump map from the plane, from the high poly to the plane. And you can get away with it being very low poly, you know, so you can use it in a game engine, and get out something very high poly looking. So. Uh, that's all for this quick tips and I hope you enjoyed it I will have another one I found a cool little plugin called ghost town there's a tutorial on it but it wasn't very good so I'm going to look around it and try to make a better one hope you enjoyed this little quick tutorial on how to bake out normal maps onto a low poly surface and have a good one cheers